Great. Thank you very much. And welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live this morning. I'm Kim Case, and I'm here with Peggy George and Lorna Costantini with our special guest, Heidi Beffert. And we're going to be talking today about the way she uses technology in the classroom. And this is our live binder image. And we want to let you know that the recordings of every session are posted to our archives and resources page on our blog at live.classroom20.com. So anytime you happen to miss a session or you just want to review a session, you're welcome to go back to those archives and share those with your colleagues. And right now, we'd like to know where you're joining us from. So if you could click on the second item, the laser pointer. Sometimes you have to click on it twice to get it to activate. And then show us where you're from located in the world. And you can also type in in the chat if you're not able to get the little um, laser pointer activated. I know Lorna's up in Chile, Canada. And Peggy's in Arizona, and I'm in San Antonio, Texas. And it's great to see where everybody's from that has joined us today. And for those who are viewing the recording, you can also see where everybody has joined us from. And welcome to those who are outside of the United States or Canada. We're going to go ahead with our polling questions. And the first polling question is, have you heard of PLN or professional learning networks? Have you ever heard of the PLN? If you have, click on the green check. And if you've not, the red X and the voting options are just below your name. We'll give everybody a bit of time to go ahead and vote. And then I'll post the results. Again, have you heard of PLN or Professional Learning Networks? Green check, yes. The red check, no. And let me get those results. And it's a pretty large majority have heard of PLN and hopefully are using their PLN. And if you haven't, you will be very familiar when to start incorporating those. Let's go on to the next polling question. Are you currently blogging yourself or blogging with your classroom? If so, click on the green check for yes and the red X for no just below your name. You won't click on the slide so that you can register your vote. Looks like we have quite a bit of votes coming in. And just from the, a quick overview, looks like we have a fairly large majority are blogging for themselves or blogging with students. And that's wonderful to see, especially when you're including students. And let's go on to our third polling question. Have you completed any global projects with other classrooms? such as using ePAL, Skype Classroom, or Blogs, or just any type of global project with another classroom. If you have a green check, and if you've not, the red X, I'll give everybody just a bit of time so that they can go ahead and vote. And we have a large majority that looks like they voted this time. So looks about 18% have have gone ahead and completed a global project and about 54% have not. So it's going to be a great thing that uh, you can explore after our session today when Heidi talks about that. And again, we want to welcome our very special guest, Heidi Beffert. I'm so apologize if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. 
but we want to welcome her today. She's our featured teacher for the month of May. I can't believe it's May already. And she's just, she was nominated by um, Nancy Pratt, and she's just got phenomenal credentials. Heidi um, has her master's degree, and she's national board certified as well. She's currently teaching in grade four, but she's taught a four or five multi-age at a core knowledge school in our district, in the district in Arizona. And she was named one of the top 10 educational bloggers of 2012 from Education World. And her current blog, Globicate, focuses on the earth and geographic knowledge and global awareness, as well as shared responsibility for real world issues and the global community. And her blog is, located, is loaded with lots of resources for teachers. And in addition, she contributes a Common Core writing lesson that she features on writinglesson.neen.com. So those are some wonderful things that she's doing. And if there's anything I left out, Heidi, we welcome you to share that and add in some of your credentials. But we'd like you to start off with the newbie question of what does Web 2.0 mean to you? And why do you use Web 2.0 tools in your classroom? So welcome, Heidi. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Kim. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I can't tell you. So um, what does Web 2.0 mean to me? Um, and why do I use it in my classroom? Well, um, as I was thinking about that question, because I think when you get when you start using um, Web 2.0 and you start using all the tools out there that we have at our fingertips now, um, you kind of do it instinctively. And so this question to me was a great reflective question because I had to come back and think about, you know, how did I start and why do I use these tools? But I'll tell you why I use these tools. Um, one, um, it's created a great um, avenue for me to, and this is probably my main reason, is to differentiate learning for all of my students in my classroom. Um, learning is something that you do with other people. Um, you take and it's a very social activity. Not one person when I started teaching um, multi-age quite a few years ago, um, and not only have I taught four or five, but I've taught one, two, three, and two, three, so I've taught the spectrum of a multi-age classroom. And that's where I've developed my um, thought that um, learning happens on a, um, it doesn't happen at one grade level. A lot of our learning that we do each day is um, with other people of the other age groups, and everyone has something to contribute, but not one person learns alike. So I've been able to take what I know about Web 2.0 tools and to help um, meet the needs of all of my students in very different ways. And you can do this with just one computer in your classroom. Um, another reason that I use Web 2.0 2.0 tools, that's kind of a tongue twister, um, is because I am love to tap into my students' creativity. It's such an awesome way to um, give kids choice and to watch them collaborate, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, the other thing is, is we have all of these great sites out there that you can access. And with our new um, implementation of Common Core Standards, you can ask them to think critically. They can um, create their own questions, critical questions about what's happening around the world. Um, and these authentic real life issues become more meaningful to them. And so um, I'm very passionate about the earth, so I've been able to take that and create a lot of curiosity in my classroom. It creates community. Students learn to share. Um, I don't have, I, I actually on my campus have quite a bit of tools in my classroom um, and through grants and um, donations. Um, I also know that two, Web 2.0 tools um, will challenge students. Um, it, ask them to get out of their box and to find new things, just like all of us. And so I love that about that. Um, and it's a wonderful way to communicate not only with parents and with each other, um, but with other people around the world, other educators, and see what they're doing and to learn new things. Um, it's a powerful learning um, tool. And I would love to see um, 
and I know that everybody does um, use the internet. Um, in our school district, we tend to have a lack of funds for um, technology, but they're moving forward with that and then finding money everywhere. So I highly encourage you to write those grants and to ask for donations. And, and so Web 2.0, if you bring it into your classroom, I truly believe that your classroom will be a caring classroom, a classroom where there's choice and um, critical thinking and collaboration, and that not only digital citizenship, but citizenship and um, an environment where you will see so many great things going on. So that is one reason why I use Web 2.0 tools. Um, any questions on that? Not, I guess not. Um, I'm going to move on to what I want to talk to you guys about today. But I want to, um, I know all of you, um, pretty, most of, pretty much most of you are familiar with PLNs or um, professional learning networks. And here's a nice little example for you. But I want to challenge you and to extend your professional learning networks to something that I call passion learning networks. Um, I am passionate about um, the earth. And so I've taken that passion and I've brought it into my classroom and um, have been able to use it to my advantage. So I highly encourage you to do that. So instead of professional learning networks, which we all need to have because we all want to grow as learners ourselves, because I am a learner. Every day I go into my classroom, I tell my students, um, I learn something new every day. And I truly do. They teach me as well as I teach them. Um, so by putting those Web 2.0 tools into their hands, you will learn right along with them. But if you're not familiar with professional learning networks, Edutopia um, is a great, great, fantastic source for you to go to um, to find out about what's it like um, and where you can get information on joining it. Another one that um, I am actually a part of is Educators PLN. And you can see that, see that that is a Ning platform. You have to ask for permission to join. Um, I haven't been refused late yet, but you never know. So um, the Connected Educator is another network that you can join. Um, all great resources, and there's thousands more out there. I, I am just literally today going to touch on just a few that I use. Um, so anyway, passion, something about me. Um, this happens to be my passion as being out, outdoors. In fact, my husband left me today to go camping without me. I'm going to join him a little bit later. So my passion is being outdoors and, and taking care of the earth and um, biking and hiking. And so um, when I became an educator um, quite a few years ago, I decided that I wanted to bring that passion into the, my classroom. And I found that the way that I could do that was through project-based learning. Um, I could connect, um, create cross-curricular um, activities that my students could write about and do math about and um, um, learn about social studies and science and doing experiments. And so um, that was how I kind of got into passion learning networks. So how, when you go to create your passion learning network, I'm, and if it's blogging, which is where I let off a lot of my steam and I, I enjoy doing, I don't find it a chore as well as teaching. I'm, I'm passionate about my teaching and teaching others. So but ask yourself, how do you spend your time um, what do you love to do? And I can see over there on the chat over there, somebody is talking about this is my quote down at the bottom. So I just love this quote. But um, the movie Miss Congeniality, when she gets up and she's, and she's talking to Stan, who happens to be the MC, and he says, what is the one most important thing our society needs? And she happens to be a, a police officer or FBI agent. She says, that would be harsher punishment for parole violators, Stan. And she says, and world peace. I would love, love, love to see that world peace um, come in there. And frankly, Web 2.0 tools and my passion is to create that world peace. And I truly believe that we as educators can do that by, that by ensuring that everybody around the world has a quality education, not just in Europe, not just in South America, not in the United States, but across the world, where girls get to learn, boys get to learn. They have the tools to learn through, to, to learn with. Um, so that's my passion. And you can tell that I um, love it. Um, another thing that I love to do is to cultivate connections. So you're wondering, so how did I get into blogging? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, 
my um, daughter joined the Peace Corps um, in 2007, 2008, somewhere around there. Um, and oh, actually, it was a little bit later. But so when she joined the Peace Corps, she started blogging. And I thought, you know what? I have a lot to say also. As you guys are all sitting there listening to me right now going, well, she does have a lot to say. But I thought I had a lot to say. And so I thought, well, you know what? I can start a blog. And I'd love to share what I'm doing in my classroom. And, and I cannot believe how it exploded for um, me once I started doing that. And I am going to switch. Um, show you my blog here in just a minute. But so cultivate connections. Um, by working and creating your passion learning network, um, you will find that there are a lot of other people out there, as we can see by the people joining us today, um, who feel the same way that we do. We want to keep our Earth um, looking good. And we want to make sure that it's here for future generations. And we want everybody as teachers, I believe, um, uh, we want everyone to have a quality education. So reaching out to others. Remember your passion learning. You can take and move on. You can find, I know all of you are familiar with Facebook. I'm, who's not familiar with Facebook, right? Um, Twitter. Twitter is a great one. And if you have an iPad, which I know Lorna has her, she's on her iPad today, um, a great tool that you can use to web 2.0 2 tool to help you with Twitter and to kind of um, make sense of all those Twitter feeds that you get um, is to use Flipbook. It happens to be um, an app that you can purchase. Um, actually, it might be a free app. If I'm, I, I have a lot of apps on my iPad. So, but a free, an app that you can use is Flipboard. And it will organize your Twitter feeds into like a book, kind of a reading book, so it makes it even easier to see. Um, another way that I get out things and find things that I want to use in my classroom or I want to share with others is Pinterest. Scoopit is another one. I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. Google Plus, um, iGoogle, um, all great sources to follow people. Every, most blogs that you go to will have an RSS or a syndication feed that you can join. Um, LinkedIn, more. I, I, I don't use LinkedIn as much as I should because I kind of consider LinkedIn part of my professional um, network. StumbleUpon is another great source. And if you go to my website, you will see that I have StumbleUpon there. Um, I like to f I find tons of stuff that I want to share with people. And it's a great idea to, um, to use StumbleUpon for, um, to share um, issues going on around the world, news, um, interviews, um, YouTube. And StumbleUpon is kind of like an online newspaper. And so I follow people there. And I also, people follow me. So I, I think I, I don't even know how many people I have following me on StumbleUpon. But um, We Are Teachers is another great source to build your passion learning. Um, and obviously Cla Classroom 2.0 and Teacher 2.0. So be social. On my, when you go to my blog, most blogs, this is what I was just talking about, have three or four of these little icons. My blog happens to have, have them in the form of trees, which, um, as you will find, um, goes right along with what I'm passionate about. So I have Facebook. I have the T is for Twitter, if you're not familiar. Pinterest, which has become like a wild, crazy, um, uh, fanatic thing that everybody is doing now. Everybody's Pintering or Pinteresting. I don't know how they say that. But, and then here is your RSS feed or your syndication feed if you want to follow those um, people. So moving on, one of my philosophies that I have when I'm integrating technology either for myself here at home or on my blog, um, I like to kind of play around with something before I kind of jump in with both feet. I truly believe, and I'll talk to you about it a little bit later, but um, I, the easier it is and when it's free, I love it even more. I'm all about free and easy um, on my website or my blog and also with technology. Find a tool that you think you are interested in, take it back to your classroom, play around with it. I know that a lot of times when I'm in front of my classroom, um, they laugh at me. They, they have so much fun laughing at me because I might have something new. And I'll sit there. And of course, as anybody knows who uses a lot of technology, it doesn't always go the way we want it to, correct? So um, that can be kind of frustrating. But anyway, find a piece of technology that you love. Um, 
educational networks such as Edmodo and Ning are a great place to start if you're thinking of integrating and starting your own project-based learning or your global project. These are platforms that allow you to monitor what your students are doing. Um, the other thing, if you're using technology in your classroom, okay, and everybody listen, you have to set aside time to do it. Um, I know that's hard in um, this era of standardized testing, but as educators, we have to, if you remember what I talked about in the beginning on Web 2.0, we have to give children the time to be children. They need that time for creativity and choice and caring and communicating, and they can't do it if you're rushing them through um, standardized tests or curriculum. I know curriculum is important, and um, it's important to me, but I do encourage you to use technology and set aside that time. Um, so here's my blog. I'm going to flip over to my blog so you can kind of see what it looks like. And here we go. So this is Globacate, Global Education for a New Generation. I used this um, to kind of, like I said, to, to share my passion with other people. I'm going to scroll down here, and you can see this is a live site. When you come to any blog, most blogs have like this header right here and these tabs. Um, one way that I have gotten pretty good at blogging is um, by being a guest author with other people. Um, I actually ha um, participate with uh, other collaborative blogs. I don't do a lot of it, especially during the school year, because life is busy when you're a teacher and you're always doing something, my husband says. Um, but on my website here, you can see on Friday I posted this. I found this site, which I absolutely love, love, love. But it's by um, the Federal, Federal Research sources for educational excellence. And the reason that I love this is because <clears throat> when we're using our web 2.0 tools, you want to be able to share um, things, um, primary docs, um, videos, um, animations with your students. Because you know this is the generation that is um, using these types of things on a daily basis. And they want to have their hands on it. Let me tell you, they cannot stand to not have their hands on it. So this one right here happens to this federal uh, depository of uh, educational tools. Not only has um, animation, but it has primary docs. It has photos, videos. And as you can see, I'm always throwing tech tips up there. But if you use something such as Skitch, which is an, um, an app also, or Air Server, if you happen to have one, all you need in your classroom is one iPad, and you have the world at your fingertips. You don't need a whole classroom full of technology. And I'm going to show you that um, in just a little bit. I happen to have participated in a project not too long ago. And believe it or not, we had four really old tangent computers. And we were still able to do what we wanted to do. Um, as you scroll down my blog, you can see I've got, you can join over here if you want to. Um, I don't concentrate too much on the numbers because this is a passion of mine. And I figure people who want to join will join. And if they don't, um, I don't always join. Um, uh, people, but I do do quite a bit through um, plenty of different sites, not only um, through Google Friends Connect, which I have quite a few people there, um, but through Twitter and Facebook and Scoopit and LinkedIn. Um, as you can see, this over here, this flip, flip this um, scrolling uh, global books icon that you see there, that actually is just some suggestions that I have to bring authentic, real world literature into your classroom. Um, one that I used this last year was um, um, A Long Walk to Water. I love A Long Walk to Water. Um, I always read to my students every day. We talk about real life issues. Um, we reflect on our lives and we compare and contrast um, how our classroom is, and our lives are like other people around the world. Using authentic literature like A Long Walk to Water can make kids think. It makes them ask questions. It makes them question our world, which we want them to. Another great one, if you're into um, saving our world, is A River Ran Wild. Um, great book about saving the earth. Um, this one happens to be on uh, Sundiata in India. So there's all types of things in here. Another thing that I want to show you um, that's not on this page, but um, my daily glow I use in my classroom to um, find places around the world that the students might be interested in. Um, and we write about those. 
I know that Lorna and Peggy mentioned earlier on about um, uh, the Writing Six Writing Network, which is on here also. And you can see these are all blogs and things that I either follow or I participate in. So as we scroll down here, right over here, the Writing Lesson of the Month, um, they have just some great tools for you to incorporate writing in your um, classroom. I have a lot of free things on my blog that I like to share with people. Um, there's quite a few um, smart board lessons that you can use on different areas around the world, um, and they are free. Um, I created those with my friend Carolyn, who um, um, blogs on the Wise Owl Factory and um, Connect a Blog, right here, Connect a Blog. Here is Scoop It, like I showed you about early on. So these are all tools that you can use to um, adjunct or bring to your classroom to get that Web 2.0 and that global connection in your classroom. Um, I'm going to go back to the slides here. Um, so that's my passion. And I'm hoping as, you're, as I'm talking here today, you're thinking to yourself, what is, what is my passion? Because um, we all have passions. Here's a shot of that daily glow. And here's a smart board lesson. You can find those on my website. Um, and they, the smart board lessons are all free. So please help yourself and share them with your friends. I love when people get something out of something I've put on there. So blog with your Skype, oh my, where do I go? So many choices. Well, I happen to choose Blogger, but in my mind, and I do use KidBlog in my classroom at this point, and I've used Wikispaces in the class, my Wikispace right now, I use more for my passion learning. Um, but I used it for the project that I'm going to share with you in a little bit. Um, so go in, try it. Um, a lot of these, WordPress, um, in my mind, WordPress tends to be a little bit more difficult. Blogger um, has standard templates that you can just jump right in and create your, play, your page. Once you get your page up, you can just do your standard templates and formats and play around with it. Remember, no one's going to judge you. I found I was always worried about that, but it really didn't happen. Um, I asked a lot of questions. One great place to go is free technology for teachers. Um, uh, Richard Burns shares tons and tons and tons of ideas on how to integrate uh, technology into your classroom and how to use it. Um, and if you just Google stuff, you'll find it. Um, blog a little each day. Blog ahead of time. I know that as teachers, all of you are st stretched for time as I am. I usually blog at night. And you can schedule those blogs to kind of come out on a day that you want to. So if you have a day where you want to just do four or five blogs in a, in a row, you can schedule them for through the week or the next couple of weeks. And voila, you're all set. Um, and I will tell you, the more you blog, the easier it gets. So don't be afraid to make mistakes, even for yourself. Um, our kids, we encourage our kids to make mistakes every day, and that's how they learn. So you go ahead and try it too. So browse for your passions. Read blogs that interest you. Um, find uh, syndication feeds that you want to follow, and I follow mine on Google. Um, up, get updates from your sites. Go to Facebook. Um, join the conversations. Now, if you, if, now I want to ask all of you, are you a superstar or are you a wallflower? Because if you're a wallflower, and let me just tell you, people may think you're kind of a lurker. So if you're joining these groups, make sure you um, contribute to the conversations because they want to hear your ideas too. Um, sign up for a Twitter account. That's one of the easiest ways to go. Play around with Twitter. It's so fun to try to get those um, tiny URLs in there and all the stuff you want to say. Um, and it's um, a great place to find tons of technology, new technology to use. Um, I was just in a t uh, w uh, uh, professional uh, development the other day. Um, with Tony Vincent, as those of you with iPads, everyone knows Tony, learning in hand. He has some great ideas. And um, never be afraid to make a mistake. His stuff didn't work. So Collaboration Nation. You guys are running. OK, what's well, Collaboration Nation? Well, I say Collaboration Nation because you have to collaborate as much as we're asking our students to, to collaborate. Um, and if you don't, nobody's going to want to talk to you. So I've met so many people from around the world that I wish I had about 48 hours in each day so that I could talk to them. So in my, this is a screenshot of my um, Facebook. And as you can see, I have tons of groups that I contribute to and talk to. Um, there are all types of groups. There are blog groups. There's teacher groups. This one happens to be a private group, but they happen to be all teachers. Um, 
and then there is my page that I manage down there. So once you get your page up and running, your blog, you can take and connect it right to your um, Facebook account. Okay, so what do you do next once you've you found something that you want to do? So join your groups, your Facebook, your Nings, your Google+, um, and there's, like I said, tons of information out there. Um, go to some of those sites and comment. And now I had a different screenshot I was going to add, but I was having issues early on <coughs> Excuse me, with my, <coughs> my um, PowerPoint, so I put this piece in. But when you go to and you comment on somebody else's blog, you can add in your own URL or blog website, and they know that they'll come back and comment to you, and you can create that connection with somebody from around the world also. OK, so I'm going to switch back to the internet here. Um, take it back to the classroom. So these are some of the things that I've used or am using. In fact, all of these right now I am using, um, not EduBlogs, but KidBlog in my classroom. And I want to show you, so we don't run out of time, what that looks like. Um, Kids love to share their work with everybody. So um, right now, I am working with this group of students. Um, and as you can see, this is Kid Blog, and this is my classroom. And I want to show you some of the slides that they've done, um, because I believe that when we're using um, Blogger in the classroom, um, students need to have choice. So I don't tell them to go blog. That's their choice that they want to blog. And I can tell you right now that everybody in my classroom blogs. So as you can see, this was from the beginning of the year. Um, we were talked about Veterans Day and what does it mean, um, which I think is an important for students to learn about, especially with so much violence that we have in the world. Um, I try not to get into too, too much details when it has to do with wars, but they can connect to that. And those are great strategies for them to create those um, connections in their head about their life and other people's lives. Um, I taught you about authentic literature. Our, um, I, we happen to be a core knowledge school, so we were learning about China. Well, how is China the same? How is China different? And you can see they start becoming bloggers also. Um, and they also leave um, comments for each other. So teaching them how to do this blogging not only helps their writing skills, but makes it um, they learn how to communicate with each other, how to be a good digital citizen. Um, and um, the benefits are just humongous. They talked about their Halloween candy that they got. Um, as we go back here, I want to show you this picture, because this is really um, a cool picture, if it comes up here. So this was, this is my classroom right now. These are my students. And you can see, we, this happens to be, you can see, See, I have a lot of technology. Well, I was fortunate enough to participate in some grants and some other projects, and all of this is spun from my love of the world. Um, I had people um, donate to my class. Um, I had matched donations. And so at this point right now, you can see I've got students working on whiteboards. I have students working um, on computers. Uh, they have iPads right there, um, uh, notebooks. They are talking with one another. Um, so using this type of um, blogging with your kids, you will, they will be creative. They will be cooperative. They love this kind of learning. It also helps you differentiate um, your learning in your classroom. Another site that I wanted to show you, um, I, had met, I don't know if I had mentioned it yet, but was um, Worldwide wide Schools with Peace Corps. Um, I, we started communicating with um, Peace Corps volunteers around the world. Once my daughter was a Peace Corps volunteer, it became very, I became passionate about it, I'm not going to lie. It was important to me to learn about what these people, these are people um, from our country that volunteer two years of their life to go around the world and to um, share what they know. They are educators. They are healthcare workers. So this is a wonderful site to go to if you want to find out about Peace Corps and connecting. Some, a lot of you said you've not connected yet. This is such a simple way to connect with somebody from around the world, and they can teach you about um, my daughter happened to have been in Liberia, Africa. But they can go other places also. Um, another great site that you can 
find stuff was Disney Planet Challenge. I happened to, in 2009 and 2010, been the Arizona winner for Disney Planet Challenge. Um, and what a wonderful experience. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. They did not do it this year, but this link right here, Friends for Change, has tons of ways for you to create those project-based learning and connect globally with other people from around the world. Um, I want to show you what this, a little bit of what our work was like on Disney Planet Challenge. And this is my wiki space. I told you about our wiki space. This was the wiki space that we used when we were completing um, Disney Planet Challenge. We have an area up here in Arizona called Spur Cross. They wanted to put through a hotel and a road and a bunch of development up there. Um, our town of Cave Creek, I'm from a very small town in Arizona called Cave Creek. And this is a beautiful Sonoran desert area. And I don't know if there's a picture on here of the desert. But anyway, the city and other people got together and decided they wanted to save this land. So our challenge was saving Spur Cross, um, one saguaro at a time. Arizona is known for saguaros, as is northern Mexico. We brought in people. We talked to people. We had fundraisers. Um, this gal here was a, is a long resident longtime resident here in Arizona who has grown up with Spur Cross. And as you can see, I wanted to show you this slide. Um, these computers in the back are old tangent computers. I had four of them when we did this project. Um, and they were able to make amazing connections with people around the world. Um, um, Bob the Owl Guy, um, other people, Tonto Force, um, uh, Force Rangers, um, the town of Cave Creek came in to talk to us. So anyway, as you scroll down in a wiki space, everybody has access to writing on it. And you can see that they've put all of their ideas down. So please, if you get a chance, you can go to that. Um, I am going to go back to the slides right now because I can see that we're kind of getting close on time because I have so much I want to share with you. Um, you guys didn't fall asleep, did you? Uh, so anyway, app away. Find a tool that you want to use in your classroom. Become an expert on it. Choose one or two to start with. And once you've mastered them, move on. Some of my favorite tools that I'm using right now in my classroom is KidBlog. KidBlog happens to be one of the easiest, easiest, easiest blogs to get up and running in your classroom if you would like to um, sh have your kids start blogging. Edmodo is a great platform also. You can monitor um, what's going on in there. You can do assignments. Glogster, um, if you're not familiar with Glogster, is online um, posters. I happen, happen to be a fan also of Pic Collage, um, great way for students to show their learning. Um, Vokey is a fun way to create um, animated voice um, pictures that they can share their learning with. And they've done that with presidents and um, biographies. Notability is an app that I use right now to um, take pictures of my students. They type up reflections in it. Um, they can, they uh, do, we do a lot of journaling, not only on our kid blogs, but also in journals. They can record something that they've written. And I can use email and send all of that off in a PDF file to their parents so they can hear and see what they're doing. And it's a wonderful way to stay connected. Remember, um, I talked at the beginning of the session about communication. So, and then Padlet is another tool that you can use. Um, some classroom connections, I didn't show all of these to you because I know we're running out of time. Um, but ePals, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. The um, Writers Club, Rob Sablagia, I think is how you say his name. Writers Club, this is a wiki space. Genius Hour, Genius Hour is the whole new hot topic going on right now. Um, that's a picture of my blog. Students went out, they took a picture of something that interested them on our campus, and they wrote a descriptive paragraph about it. Great way to get your students to um, blog and get things into their hands. Really quickly, I want to go over just a couple more sites. Um, I'm going to go back to um, our um, the internet here, because I'm going to show you one more thing, and then I will wrap this up. I want to show you this site right here, Google Checks, Alice Christie. Um, she is a professor, I believe, down at ASU. Um, as you scroll through here, um, she has this um, site where you can go and you can take tracks around the world of um, different things in 
um, to learn about, and you can incorporate Technology Web 2.0 tools into that. This happens to be one that I created, Know Where to Go. And it's all about geography. And so as students use this, they will see this right here. They can click on this. And as it's coming up here, um, it's still kind of generating the site. You can see, there we go. So it gives information on these little dots right here and down um, what I used was vocabulary. Um, there was teacher's instructions here. There's an assessment on here. Um, and also I've linked it to the Common Core and Arizona State Standards. Amazing, amazing, amazing site to get your kids to know about the world and see it. And right down there is Liberia, if you're just wondering. Um, moving back to the slides. So wonder why genius hour. Here's our genius, our wonder why genius hour in the board. Remember, I told you you have got to give your students time to um, to explore and to ask questions. And you can see very simple board there. They take and they create questions, and then when they have time, they have time about three or four times a week to go and explore those questions. And then they create projects to share with us on what they found out, um, where the mountain meets the moon, tying in um, other authentic literature to our learning. Service learning projects. This happens to be a picture, um, several pictures of our Disney Planet Challenge. Here's those old computers that I told you about. But this is what I love, and this is why I included this in here. And this is why I'm passionate about our world and service learning and project-based learning and giving Web 2.0 tools to kids. Here they are, old computers. They are collaborating right here. That Those conversations that happen that you can't create unless you give them that time. Here they are. These are two classes. They have they pulled in other classes around our school to talk about the swirl. Remember I told you our, um, this happens to be right on our campus to talk about what happens to the swirls and, um, when they die. This was our fundraising activity that we did, and they raised a lot of money um, by doing chores for bobcats, chores for coyotes, um, and bobcat bucks. And that was a fun activity that they created themselves. Um, and they're working together. Down here, we're talking to experts. We took a field trip out to Saguaro, um, to Spur Cross, excuse me, um, to find out so the kids could see what it was about. Some of my kids had never been out there. They've not been hiking. Take them outside of the classroom. Let them explore their world. And here they are. They're conducting interviews. They're running the cameras. And you can see I'm nowhere in the, in the, in the picture. I believe I was teaching at the time. So go ahead and get outside there. There's Google Earth and Google Trex, which I just showed you. Um, so as I wrap up here, I want to um, tell you our, our world is such an amazing place to um, explore. If you're using Web 2.0 tools, I'm all about free and easy. So if you get a chance, try, try out all those free apps out there. There's some um, applications, um, web um, sites that you can go that will send you all the free apps that come up. So check those out. Um, and then I want to come back, and I just want to uh, reinforce those things that I'm passionate about. So go take your kids out. Have them see the world. Um, let them have some creativity. Let them, let them be creative. Um, nothing like seeing um, the world through um, a child's eyes. Um, teach them digital citizenship. Teach them how to communicate with each other and with other people from around the world. Um, let them be connected to things so that um, they can write about that and read about that and share it with other people. Give them choice. That's a huge one. You've got to give them choice on how they show you how they learn. Um, there's so many different ways to do that. Um, challenge them. I, I expect my students to do their best. I expect them to be amazing. Um, and I tell them that because they are amazing. And I know that they can do it. So if you share those thoughts at the beginning of the year, you create an environment um, where they're not afraid to make mistakes and to share their hopes and wishes with you and also their fears, you will have a classroom full of creative, caring, collaborating, curious, critical thinking students. And you can meet all of their needs, even with the Common Core Standards, by doing this. So I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody at Classroom 2.0 for having me today. Um, I truly am humbled because there's some amazing people that have done webinars on here. And thank you to all of you guys who joined me today. Great. Thank you so much. Um, if you have a question that you'd like to ask Heidi uh, that we might have missed, 
we welcome you to and invite you to type them in the chat or you can click on the hand with the arrow and um, we'll give you the mic if you'd like to do that. Uh, Lori, did you see any questions that I might have missed throughout the way that were not already addressed? I didn't hear from, uh, okay, great, thanks, Lori. And Heidi, Peggy's talking, if you could tell us a little bit more about the Global School Writers Club that you um, organize and maintain. Um, I'm not sure which one she's talking about there. Are you talking about the um, Writers Club? That would be, can I switch back over to the internet and show you that? Absolutely. I think Go right okay. ahead. Thank you. So, um, I think it was Peggy was asking me about the Writer Club. So here's the Writers Club. Um, I personally did not, just to clear that up, I didn't organize this. This is um, um, Rob, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce his name, but Sablagia. Um, he has a Writers Club um, and he has students that can um, write from around the world in this wiki space. Um, here's his name, Sub Sablaglia Writers Club. Um, and at the beginning of each year, you can join his Writers Club. Um, they post videos, they write to each other via this wiki space. Um, amazing, amazing work being done with um, just writing around the world. So there is that site right there. And any other questions? Yes. Do uh, we have to join the wiki for parent permission? Or in yes. Order to be able to yes. see some of the activities. Absolutely. You have to ask permission to join the, the wiki. Um, a lot of wikis, um, just so you know, you can join, you can view them as we just did and see what's going on there, but you don't necessarily have to um, join it. To, if you want to be involved in it, you will have to ask to join in. Um, um, and you can do that by joining wiki spaces and then ask them when you log in, you can join and they can see who you are. Um, Rob Sablagia is part of the globalschool.net um, and they have quite a few other projects out there such as the Genius Hour um, project, um, Flat Classroom project, um, Hello World project. So that, those wiki spaces, if I was going to start a new um, project right now, that's where I would go for um, because they're, they can be very simple projects. Somebody has already created the project for you and you can join in with them and grow from there and I think that's really important. Um, but I, and also on a side note, I know we're talking Web 2.0 tools, but there's an amazing book out there. If you're not quite sure where to go, that's been written by Julie Lindsay and Vicki Davis who happen to be the co-founders of the Flat Classroom Project. It's called Flattening classrooms, engaging minds, and it's moving to global collaboration one step at a time. Amazing, amazing book that will just lay it all out for you, if, like I said, if you're not sure where to go. And speaking of laying it all out, do you have a form that you use with students uh, to get parent permission to participate? No, um, I, I have used forms in the past. A lot of the sites, um, well, when I did Disney Planet Challenge, obviously, there were forms that you had to ask for releases. When I meet with my parents at the beginning of the year, um, we, we have technology agreements through our school and our district that we use. Um, my district is so supportive of what I do, and I really do appreciate that because some districts are not that way. So um, they are constantly my cheerleaders behind me, so hopefully you work in a district like that. But um, some of the um, platforms that you can use, such as Edmodo, parents have to log in and they can read, they have to log in um, via um, uh, sign in, logins, passwords to be able to participate. And so I do send home each site, depending on what you're doing, has a little bit something different. Um, if I know that I'm on a site where I know that, um, and also photo releases is a huge thing. You want to make sure that your parents know that you're going to be working. And if it's a problem, then make your site private. 
Um, so you can still do this and do the steps where you're not showing pictures or videos, but you can do those writing um, wiki spaces where you don't have to necessarily use those. So um, I do have forms. I've not posted them, but there are forms out there. And if somebody would like to, they can email me and I will get them to them. I don't have it with me right now. Great, thank you. And Peggy had mentioned earlier, are you able to demonstrate how you create the widgets that are posted on your blog? Sure, yeah, I can do that if people want to see that. I'm going to switch right on over back to my um, web page here. Um, so let me show you Blogger really quickly. Blogger is really easy to use. So I'm back on my web page. I'm already signed in. Um, you can see up here, here's my Gmail. If you have questions or you would like to ask me anything, you can contact me through Globocate or you can send me just a quick Gmail uh, email. Um, I'm totally okay with either one. And I love sharing stuff with people. So um, please don't hesitate to ask me for those of you who are in the room today and who have, are listening to the webinar. Um, if you go to the design button, it's being slow, so bear with me. Blogger can be a little bit slow sometimes. Um, and depending on what you have on your page, it may take a minute or two. And hopefully this isn't going to take long. Um, but when you go to the design button, you'll get a kind of like a dashboard screen. <coughs> and you can go into your post. I don't know if this is going to work, Peggy. Might be, oh, let's see. Uh, like I said, Blogger, depending on, especially on the weekends, Blogger can be a little bit slow. So here's my dashboard. Um, if you come over here to, here's the overview, post, pages. If we come down to the layout here, we can click on that. And it's really slow today. I don't know if this is going to work here. Okay, we might be out of luck. But anyway, over here on these right here, it gives you, um, oh, here's our layout. So you're going to see my um, layout of my um, blog come up, um, hopefully. Here we go. It's generating. It's slow. So let's say that I wanted to, um, add a widget or a gadget, like I have a lot of widgets and gadgets on my page. You see right, oh, sorry, my, my fingers are too fast for the, the page. Okay, so you see right here where it says add a gadget. All I need to do if I have a blogger um, account is click on that. It's going to give me some choices of what I want to add. Now, I, when I started blogging for everybody in the room, I knew nothing about blogging. I just want to share that with you. I knew absolutely zero about blogging. So um, I've learned about HTML and code and JavaScript and buttons and sharing. So and this is only, I started the blog just a couple of years ago. So if you're kind of hesitant, please don't be. Jump in with both feet. You know, the water's nice and warm. So if I wanted to add a, ga a gadget or a badge or something, all I didn't have to do is scroll through. Blogger makes it very easy for you to do that. Um, as you can see, if it's black, um, it's already on my web page. Um, if it's blue, I can go ahead of, and add it just with this little plus button. Um, I can add in popular posts. I already have pages on there. And then if you go to my blog, you can see the different pages. Um, AdSense is off right now. Um, so my blog's a little bit faster now. You can add HTML um, and JavaScript. And that might be something that, um, like a blog button from somebody else or somebody, somebody that has written code for you that you can just plug right into there. And the best way to do that is to just copy and paste. You can add a slideshow. You can add images. You can do a video bar. And so just so you know, I haven't been in this for a while, but Blogger has added more widgets for you to use. So and you can see, here's your RS feed if you wanted to do that, um, a logo, profile, and there's uh, 27 different ones you can use. So I know I'm scrolling fast. And those are just the basic gadgets. You, there are more gadgets in there, and there are other ones that you can add of your own. So hopefully that answers that question. 
um, other um, posts? You want me to continue going through this? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close out the session, but we invite everybody to stick around and continue asking questions. Um, as soon as we're finished, we'll give it back to Heidi to continue with questions that uh, you haven't asked yet or that you might that we might have missed or overlooked. We want to let you know that on May the 8th, Steve Harganon will be interviewing John Hunter. And May the 9th, he'll be interviewing Peter Gray. And then on May 21st, Ernie Turner and Simona David. And then on May 23rd, he'll be talking with Will Richardson on Y School. And that's become a very popular book right now. So you'll want to check Hello. out all of those interviews with Steve Harganon. And those are at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. So you'll want to check those out when you get a chance. And we want to let you know that we have some great sessions coming up. <coughs> we have on Angela, we have Angela Myers talking about the Quest to Matter Student Challenge on May the 11th. And on May the 18th, we're going to have Genius Hour, which was mentioned a little bit with Denise Krebs and the Genius Hour team. We won't have a session on May 25th for the Memorial Day holiday weekend in the United States. And then on June the 1st, we'll be talking with Tammy Moore, who's going to be talking about Adobe Captivate. And that's one of the, the um, other competitor of, uh, web conferencing applications that you can use as well. And as soon as... Uh, there's a survey that you can fill out and or we also have this link in our live binders that you can use to nominate a feature teacher just like Heidi this month. And we would love for you to nominate either yourself or a colleague, anybody who works with students or educators, and just use that form, that survey link. It's also in the live binders. And let us know why you think that that person should be a featured teacher for a future month. And as soon as you exit today's session, a survey link will automatically open up in your browser for you. And we would love to get feedback on today's session, as well as some ideas on topics that you'd like to hear about in future sessions. And also, any time that you view one of our recorded sessions in the archive, you can request a professional development certificate as well as one for today. You just use that survey link and that is also in the live binders page. And then Peggy will get out the certificate to you and you can print it out and turn it in and see if it's accepted uh, for hours in your district or you can just post it in your classroom. We also have an iTunes U channel that you can subscribe to to get the MP4s, the videos, and the MP3s, the audio um, collections. Both of those are free, and you can subscribe to the individual uh, channels, or you can subscribe and get uh, the entire group of the audio or the video ones. We also have an RSS feed that you can use to subscribe to our blog post to get the same resources if you didn't want to use iTunes U. Both of those work. Either one of those are acceptable. We want to give Heidi a very special thank you and to thank Steve Hargadon, who's the founder of our weekly webinar series, and to Weebly for hosting our website for us and allowing us to post to our blog posts. And to each of you who asked questions and continued the conversation in the chat each week, as well as to Blackboard for allowing us to meet in this platform every week. And there were some questions above about, um, I think that we might have missed, and Peggy's asking if you know if Padlet has a 
an app, and I thought I saw that they do have an app now for the iPad, but I'm not for sure. Heidi, are you familiar if they do or not? Yes, I'm not. I'm not sure if you guys can hear. Uh, Kim, can you hear me? Yes. Kim, I see you're having some bandwidth issues. Kim, but yes. can you hear me? Heidi. Okay, I I think they do have an app. Um, oh, yeah, I know. I once I got out of Blogger, I started having issues, so I'm not sure why. But I do believe they have an app also. Um, there's a great um, Aaron Klein at Kleinspiration has a great um, blog post about using Padlet, and there's so many different things you can do with it. So yes, I do believe they have an app. I thought that they did. Um, that was any other question released. And there's a question about how many use uh, teachers pay teachers yeah, we, to publish and share the resources that they create. What was the question again? I'm sorry. That's okay. How many in the room use teachers pay teachers to publish and share resources that they create? Do you use teachers, pay, um, pay teachers, or anybody in the room? Um, I do. Anybody in the room use teachers, pay teachers? Teacher Pay Teachers is a great site. Um, obviously, there's a lot of controversy about that. Some people don't think that teachers should um, um, have financial gain for their um, products that they're putting out there. But frankly, we're paying the publishers for the same thing. And I, I believe that I, I have a site. Obviously, I support it. Um, but if you go to my site, I think there's 44 or 44 things on, 42 or 44 things on my site. But I, um, I think all but about 10 of those are for free. So um, help yourself. Grab them. I, I, I don't personally um, use it as a financial a source of finances in my house, so um, I wish it was. And some people are very, have been very successful at it. And there's tons, like Peggy just mentioned. There is tons, thousands, hundreds of thousands of free resources on teachers, pay teachers, and they are quality resources. So go check them out. Just go to the free site, the free uh, button. Yeah, there are a lot of great resources that that are free, and then, and if we're going to spend the time to create an extensive unit, um, I don't see the problem with uh, sharing that and asking for a fee in return. Absolutely, but, but you know, well free know. resources are always good too. Right, but and as you well know. Um, uh, Kim, that some of the districts have, um, some of the schools and states and districts have kind of put their thumb on that because they don't like that they're talking about intellectual um, property, which there's a whole, you could do a whole nother classroom 2.0 live on that one. Definitely. If you created it during school time or for school purposes, then it belongs to that district kind right. of thing. So, yes, I know what you're talking about. Are there any other questions uh, that we might have missed uh, before we let Heidi go and let everybody enjoy their weekend? We want to make sure you have your opportunity to do so. And if not, you can always contact her. All of the information is her contact information is in the uh, live binders. I think that's the right live binders uh, link. But we want to make sure that you have time to ask your questions today. No, that's the wrong live binders. Let me get you the right live binders link. Can I just um, once again tell you guys all thank you for having me. Um, it's been really, really exciting for me to do this. So thank you very much. And um, please, con anybody that's left in the room, please contact me if you have questions or something I can help you with or guide you into the right direction. Um, I so appreciate all my teacher peeps from around the world. Great. And we're so grateful for your time and for everybody's time that are uh, faithful attendees. And if you're new, we hope that you will join us. 
and it look, looks like things are kind of winding down. That is the correct live binder link that Peggy posted in the chat. To just, and you can click on that and then explore it at a later time. But we want to thank all of you for attending today and hope that you will join us next week when we have some other great sessions planned for you. Let me see if I can get to our schedule quickly. If not, that's okay. But we do welcome you to nominate other future teachers, just like Heidi today. And Angela Myers will be with us next week. And Angela always has a great session and great conversation whenever she joins us. So have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. And we will see you on May 11th at the same time when we'll be talking with Angela Myers. So. Thank you again, and we'll see you online, everyone. Bye.